exemptions from GST, the first amendment in the existing provisions, amendment in the existing exemptions, following existing exemptions have been amended, the first amendment it is, satellite launch services, satellite launch services supplied by Indian Space Research Organization, Anthrix Corporation Limited or New Space India Limited, services provided by these persons, exam, right? supplied by Indian Space Research Organization that is nothing but ISRO. Next, Anthric Corporation Limited, New Space India Limited, these services were exempted. Now, this exemption has been extended to the all the business people. That is simply we can say satellites land services supplied by any person, any person exempted so that you can remove these lines. Earlier, specifically only these people are exempted from GST. Now, satellite launching services supplied by any person is exempted with FAT from 27th July 2023. Are you clear? So, satellite launching services provided by the any person in India exempted from GST. And you know that uh, we have a geographical support for the purpose of the launching of satellite. And as you know that we have an ISRO uh, which is located in uh, Sulurpeta, right? Srihari Kota, right? So that from the Srihari Kota, if you are launching a satellite and the recipient might be located across the country or across the world and whatever the consideration these organizations are getting, not liable for payment of any GST, it is exempted. And the second one, services provided by the CGSG or Union Territory. Actually, whatever the earlier, whatever the exemption we discussed in the classroom, the same provision here, but just only one line has been added. That is nothing but wherever you come across the word of the services by the department of the post. Apart from that, you have to remember the Ministry of Railways. That's it. Wherever you come across the word of the department of the post, <clears throat> there itself you have to add the word of Ministry of Railway. Are you clear? Ministry of Railway. Sir, what is the nature of exemption? Let me explain. The next one it is exemptions. Number one. Satellite. Launching services provided by any person in India. Now it is exempt. Earlier, only few service, only few peoples were eligible for this exemption. Now all the peoples are eligible for exemption. The second one. Services provided by CG SGR local authority. Okay. So that services provided by CG SG or local authority. Services provided by CG SG or local authority. The first one, Pata services. Actually, I am explaining the word provision only, but wherever we come across the word of the postal, apart from that, you have to remember the word of railway. Okay. So, Pata services. Pata means song, right? Other than Pata. Other than Pata services are exempt. Where CG, SG or local authority providing other than Pata services are exempted. Only the Pata services are taxable. Right? And again, Pata means, P means postal services. Postal and railway services. Remember, postal and railway. Railway is an amendment. And next, A, aircraft or vessel services. T, transportation of the goods or services. A, any other services to the business entity. 
any other services to the business entity are you clear so part of services and again these part of services provided to cg sg or local authority where the part of services are provided to cgsg or local authority again it is exempt under section 11 and the next one part of services to other than government and again part of services divided into two parts first one pad service and a concern any other service to business entity are you clear okay so pad services any other services to business entity pat pat concern postal and indian railway services indian railway is an amendment postal or indian railway services now you have to highlight the word indian railway services right postal or indian service indian railway services first one and the second one a means uh, aircraft or vessel services and the t means transportation of goods or passengers right and one more thing you have to remember pad services are taxable under forward charge mechanism pad services are taxable under the forward charge mechanism any other services to business entity it is taxable under the reverse charge mechanism under the pad services the government is liable for payment of gst whether it may be central government state government or local authority but any other services to business entity concern reverse charge mechanism applicable recipient is liable for payment of gst suppose taking an example if you are booking railway ticket supplier is the irctc and passenger you are the recipient right it is the postal or indian railway services forward charge mechanism are you clear suppose i am a business entity i am getting security services from the government right here the supplier is the government and we are the recipient and security services are not covered in pat go for any other services any other services to business entity supplier is the government recipient is a business entity in this situation reverse charge mechanism applicable are you clear so that in pad services what will happen recipient main business entity or may not be a business entity irrespective of threshold limit or exemption limit irrespective of the threshold limit or exemption limit irrespective of value of supply or consideration taxable under forward charge mechanism right suppose if you are getting postal services speed post services right you are the recipient and department of the post is a supplier government in this situation forward charge mechanism whether such a speed post cost might be a 40 rupees or 50 rupees irrespective of the fact the supplier is liable for payment of gst right suppose other than pad services any other services provided to business entity business entity what will happen reverse charge mechanism recipient is liable for payment of gst but for this purpose 
for this purpose again you have to ensure yeah for this purpose you have to ensure what is the provision any other services to business entity rcm applicable but subject to conditions still few exemptions are there even the recipient is a business entity you have to ensure you have to ensure is business entity aggregate turnover exceeds threshold limit or exemption limit you have to ensure right is business entity aggregate turnover exceed threshold limit or exemption limit if it is no suppose the aggregate turnover does not exceed threshold limit or exemption limit recipient might be a business entity but he is unregistered why he is unregistered his aggregate turnover does not exceed threshold limit or exemption limit in such a situation again it is exempt suppose is business entity aggregate turnover exit threshold limit or exemption limit as yes, that is a registered person and the second condition it is again you have to ensure is value of supply or consideration is value of supply or consideration exceeds rupees 5000 rupees in aggregate in a financial year again you have to ensure suppose even the recipient might be a business entity right and its aggregate turnover exceeds the threshold limit or exemption limit but still whatever the services received by the business entity from the government services received from the sorry services received by the business entity from the government it does not exceed 5000 rupees is value of supply consideration exceeds 5000 rupees in a financial year no then again it is exempt suppose yes sir the value of supply is exceeds 5000 rupees then only it is taxable under rc right and please remember enter this concept is applicable only for any other services to business entity other than pat please remember other than pat for pat services such exemption limit not available such threshold limit is not available even it may be a single rupee it is taxable under the forward charge mechanism now in entire story you have to remember Apart from the postal, Indian railway services also be taxable under the forward charge mechanism. And for this purpose, there is no exemption limit, threshold limit and etc. Right? I hope you are able to understand this chart. It is an easy one, easy one. And please, come, please remember, if any question given from the exemption chapter without this provision, without any one point from this provision, you cannot find a question in your examination. Suppose any question asked from the exemption chapter, definitely will find at least a single point from this chart. From this chart, are you clear with this? And the next one, and the next amendment, new exemption introduced. Very good, new exemption introduced. Next new amendment, services provided to government authorities. Services provided to government authority by way of water supply, public health, sanitary, sanitation conservancy, solid waste management and slum improvement upgradations. When these services are provided, services provided to government authority by way of water supply, public health, sanitation conservancy, solid waste management and slum improvement and upgradation. When these services are provided to government, please remember, provided to government authority exempt from gst suppose taking an example you have a company uh, xyz limited suppose this is the place which is located in chennai right 
now chennai government authorities or municipality or tamil nadu state government given a contract to the xyz limited for slum development or improvement let us assume contract price it is 500 crores right 500 crores now the xyz limited xyz limited will provide the facilities of the water sanitation conservancy solid waste management and improvement of the such slum area that is nothing but construction of the road and proper dry, that is constructing of the proper drainage system etc when all these services provided to the government authority and any consideration received exempt from gst exempt from gst this is the new amendment which came into the force with effective from with effective from 20th october 2023 are you clear this is the new amendment which is inserted in the section 11 so 20th 10 2023 onwards entry number 3b are you clear so that these are the exemptions amendment part so the first one it is satellite launching services provided by any person now it is exempted next apart from the department of the post the services provided by the ministry of railway taxable under the forward charge mechanism exemption not applicable are you clear 5000 rupees exemption or threshold limit exemption limit is not a, not applicable for these three services the same thing we discussed in a flow chart are you clear with this okay and the last one services provided to government authority by way of water supply public health sanitation conservancy solid waste management and slum improvement and upgradation these services are exempted with effective from 20th october 2023 are you clear so that easily easily we are completing amendment chapter amendment topic just a simple topics no right small 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 amendments and the next topic it is about the value of supply next topic it is about the value of supply value of supply tax to be paid on specified actionable claims at the time of receipt of payment for such supplies by the supplier this topic already we discussed in the chapter of supply in the supply chapter itself we discuss rule 31b and rule 31c are you clear so that no need to again refer here refer this topic this topic or this chapter so these amendments already we covered in the chapter of the supply mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the next amendment in the chapter of the registration what is the chapter registration i hope you are able to understand these are the small small amendments please remember whatever the topic we discussed in the classroom 98 percent the concept will be remain same just this is the one percent or two percent of the changes right in a professional course it is quite common might be uh, most of the students are uh, thinking about sir new amendments are uh, new amendments has been notified now how we have to learn how we have to insert those provisions into the those amendments into the provision or act don't get any confusion if you have a conceptual clarity uh, there is nothing but whatever the concept we discussed in the classroom if we have a clear cut picture these amendments are not big deal just we have to keep one or two points in the middle of the provision and the entire essence of the provision will be remain same just there may be a change of one or two points only because of that you no need to expect that the entire provision has been changed or entire act or law has been changed right just these are the one or two small little bit changes it will be quite common right so when you habituated at the ca inter or cma inter level final level it will become so easy right so now we are going to start with the amendments in the chapter of the registration.